So I'm going to give you an example of how some animal monitoring through GPS collars and mapping can actually work and how we'll watch this play out and understand some animal behaviors better in the classroom. Let's imagine that we have this map here uh, for the fennec fox. Do you know what a fennec fox is? Well, this is what it is. This is a fennec fox. It's a crazy looking little creature with really, really big ears. But it uses those ears as a physical adaptation to help it survive in the desert, which is its main habitat. Let's make this guy a little bit smaller here and move him over here. So this is the guy that we are going to be tracking with the GPS collar. Now the GPS collar is going to track and report back at certain times where it is getting a signal from the two antennas that are in the area. We have antenna A over here and antenna B over here. So let's take a look at some of these times. So each of these antenna are sending out signals based on the location of the fennec fox. Uh, you can see here that at 1 a.m. antenna A was giving a reading out at 90 degrees. So we're going to look at these numbers here that are on the wheel and we're trying to find and figure out where 90 degrees is at. When we are doing our mapping activity, we're going to pay close attention to this little dot here um, right above antenna A. The benefit that you're going to have when you do this in class is that you're going to actually have a ruler, so you're going to be able to make your line very, very straight. I just have my finger on the iPad, and we're going to try to make our line as straight as we possibly can. That is really not a very straight line, so bear with me. But you can see how I started at the dot and tried to go straight out from 90 uh, and drew the line all the way out to the edge of my paper. Now when I look again at 1 a.m., antenna B was giving out a signal at 105. So again, I'm going to start from that dot here in B and try to draw out as straight as I possibly can out until the two lines cross. The place where the lines cross is actually where the animal was at during this time. And so I'm going to make a dot and I'm going to label it 1 a.m so that I can begin to track the patterns and behaviors of these animals at different times of night. When I move on to 3 a.m., I can actually keep that top line from antenna A because the signal was coming out at 90 degrees. But for my bottom antenna and antenna B, I actually need to go up to 120. So I'm going to try again to draw a line out as straight as I possibly can until those two lines cross. Where that cross is, I'm going to draw a dot, and I'm going to label it 3 a.m. So from these two things, I can start to learn patterns uh, that the fennec fox has. And if I were to do this over time, I would start to learn some very specific things about this um, animal and its population, and perhaps many of the different um, population uh, creatures. So if I had one on a male and one on a female, or one, GPS collars on all of the males, I could learn different things about the population and the different patterns that they have. I can see from the GPS collar on this specific fennec fox that it was at the desert cliff area uh, with an elevation of 9,000 feet at 1 a.m. and at 3 a.m. it was back to its burrow area. So these are some really helpful things that as humans monitor populations in the wild, they can use them to help um, to understand some of the patterns. As you are thinking about your focus animal for our website project, you could actually create a map based on some of the things that you understand and know about the patterns that your focus animal has. You could use an iPad to create this. You could use a uh, paper. Um, you could use a Google map. All of these things would allow you to pinpoint animal locations at uh, different times of the day and you could explain what you might think could be going on at that time. For example, I could have some journaling that goes along with this. I could say at 1 a.m. in the desert cliff elevation area, I could say that it was monitoring the burrow because from that high elevation of 9,000 feet, 
it might be looking out for the burrow and looking out for other specific predators. At 3 a.m., since it has made its way back to its burrow, and since it is nocturnal, I might say that it might be going to sleep at this time. It might be retiring to its burrow because daybreak is going to be coming soon. And with the hot desert, these creatures want to stay in its burrow and stay out of that hot desert sun. These are things that you can start to look at and start to create as you get to know your focus animal better. And this can show me how you understand how humans monitor animal populations in the wild. You may also want to think about the aspect of a collar. Different species can have different types of collars. For most mammals, like the fennec fox, they're going to actually have a collar on it that is sending back the feed. Uh, feedback to the signal, which you guys can see over here. I kind of drew a fake collar on this one. But for alligators and crocodiles, they have done different types of things. They can't quite equip them with a collar, but they attach them in different ways. And if you're studying a bird population, they are going to attach it to a bird in a very different way as well. So let's go back to the experts and learn about other ways that humans monitor populations in the wild.